Hello and welcome to Art of the Deals. And I'm hoping you're having a wonderful day, a beautiful day, a relaxing day. Because guess what? It's about to get fun and challenging. Thank you so much for joining us here at Swords of St. Michael. I'm hoping you've been here before and you've already given us a like. If not, please do like the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you like this content and you would like to see more. Uh, my name is Sister Farrah Rose, Professor Franciscan, and I am here to share with you everything that I'm still learning about Dom Lorenzo Scapoli and the art of spiritual combat. So that's what we're here for, self-exorcism. And uh, like I said, give us a like, share the video if you can, and if you can, leave me some feedback, leave me a comment. Today's chapter, oh mercy, we're already on chapter 25. So if you're new here, you can go back to the beginning and start from chapter one. There are two levels here that we're asking you to jump in, dive in, and apply the principles as necessary on a daily and weekly basis. So it's wonderful if you journal and keep track of what you are doing and as you face challenges. Sit back, we're about to begin with a little bit of traditional Latin prayer. So as we dive in, let's calm ourselves. If you need to take a break, pause the video, grab some iced tea, warm tea, whatever it is that gets you calm and receptive. Prayer time. In nomine Patri et Filii et Spiritus Sanctui, sicurat et principio et nunc et semper et secula seculorum. Amen. Sancti Michael Archangelae, defende nos in prelio contra nequitium et insidius diobli esto presidium. Imperdele Deus, supplicius de percamor tuque, princeps meletio celestis satana maliosque, spiritus malignos, qui ad peritionem animarum per bagantur in mundo divina virtute, in infernam de trude. Amen. Now, for our research study prayer. Concede mihi misericord Deus, Qui ti placita sunt ardenter investigar vericiter, agnoscere et perfecte, ad imbleri ad laudum e gloriam nominis tui. Amen. Grant me grace, O merciful God, to desire ardently all that is pleasing to thee, to examine it prudently, to acknowledge it prudently, to accomplish it perfectly for the praise and glory of thy name. Amen. Thomas Aquinas. Chapter 25, The Soldier of Christ. Resolve to fight and conquer his enemies. Must avoid as far as possible anything that intrudes upon his peace of mind. Our peace of mind, when lost, demands every possible exertion for its recovery. We actually never can lose it or cause it to be disturbed, except through our own fault. We must be sorry for our sins, but this sorrow must be calm and moderate. Our compassion for sinners and sadness at their destruction must be free of vexation and trouble as it springs from a purely charitable motive. The countless trials that crowd this life, sickness, wounds, death, and the loss of friends and relatives, plagues, wars, fire, etc., which men naturally averse to suffering dread, all these through God's grace may not only be received submissively from the hand of God, but become occasions of joy. This is true if we view them as just punishments inflicted on sinners, or as opportunities given the just to obtain merits. These trials and events occur at the design of our Master. 
the severest tribulations of this life will bring his will to our aid so that we can march with a calm and tranquil soul any disquiet on our part is displeasing to God for of whatever nature that it may be it is always accompanied by some imperfection and it always has a tendency towards self-love in one form or another let there always be a vigilant sentinel in your soul which will discover anything that might trouble or disturb your conscience at its first alarm seize your weapons to defend yourself remember that all these evils and a great many others no matter how formidable their appearance are but imaginary for they cannot deprive you of any real good consider this fact whether God decrees or permits these things for the reasons given above or for others which we should certainly consider equitable they are hidden from our own comprehension you will find it greatly advantageous to preserve a calm mind through all the events in your life without it your pious exercises will be fruitless I am convinced that if the heart is troubled the enemy is ever able to strike us and as much as he wishes moreover in that state we are not capable of discerning the true path to follow the snares that must be avoided to attain virtue the enemy detests this peace for he knows that this is the place where the Spirit of God dwells and that God now desires to accomplish great things in us consequently he employs his most devilish means to destroy this peace he suggests various things that apparently are good it is a trap you will soon discover that these desires will destroy the very peace of your heart as a remedy for this dangerous attack we must be on guard always against any new desire seeking entrance into our heart never permit its entrance until you have completely submerged your self-love in offering this up to God confess your ignorance and beg God to clarify the matter and show you whether his de this desire comes from him or our enemy if possible you should have recourse to your spiritual director even when we are convinced that this action is prompted by the Holy Spirit we should nevertheless defer its execution until our eagerness to do this has been mortified preceded by such a mortification a good work is more pleasing to God than when it is pursued too impetuously it frequently happens that the performance of the act brings less merit than the mortification through the rejection of evil desires and the suspension of even the good ones until we have suppressed the motives of self-love we shall preserve perfect tranquility of the mind it is also necessary to overcome a certain interior regret apparently coming from God under the guise of remorse of conscience for past sins it is without doubt the work of the devil the following test will clearly point this out whenever this regret produces greater humility when it increases our fervor in doing good works and our confidence in the divine mercy we must receive it in the spirit of gratitude as a gift from heaven but when it occasions anxiety when it makes us disconsolate slothful fearful and slow to do our duty we may certainly conclude that it has been suggested by the enemy and should be disregarded it frequently happens moreover that our anxieties arise from the trials of this life there are two preservatives against them first the consequences of these trials must be considered 
They may completely destroy our desire of attaining perfection, or they may destroy our self-love. The diminution of self-love, one of our greatest enemies, gives no cause for complaint. Such trials should be received with joyful thanksgiving as favors bestowed by God. If they incline us to swerve from the path of perfection and make virtue repugnant, we must not be downhearted and lose our peace of mind. This will be considered later. Second, let us raise our hearts to God. Whatever he wills, without exception, should be received in the firm persuasion that every cross he wills to send shall prove an endless source of blessing, a treasure whose value one may not appreciate at this moment. This is the chapter I really, really have to call Guard Your Heart. Why? This is a chapter I struggle with. This is a chapter because of my very nature of who I am diving in and not looking if there's water in the pool of being the bulldozer that people put me in specific positions on various community projects or other endeavors because they know I don't hear no I just go so this chapter challenges me and my level of let's get it done we'll figure out the cost later because of the greater good and its need to be done I must sit back and determine is this desire coming from my own self-love my need to perfectly execute a job well done or is it truly God's will still working on that the jury's out these apply these exact outlined measures apply to everything in our life whether you're looking at a large purchase of a boat a house a car how about the desire to be in a relationship with another person when we look at this and we change our perception and look at the actions that we are attempting to execute are they coming from self-love or are they coming from a desire to step into God's will? And this is really, it takes so much time to look at this. We have to look at the suffering that we're going through due to our desires, whether it is a desire that we are trying to break. And in this instance, in chapter 25, we're looking at those desires that we can mortify, that we can change, that we can look at and step back and wait and be patient and pray for God's will in all things all even aspects of this desire and I like how Dom Scapoli points out the nature of our suffering all right listen to this very carefully when we desire to be in a relationship with another and we suffer when we're away from that person we suffer when we can't be with that person we suffer when we even think of that person because our hearts are just invested it's so invested in being what we believe that we must have with this person whether it's a mother-daughter relationship whether it's a mother-son whether it's a loving relationship whether it's a new dating relationship whether it's a husband wife we have to look at the nature of our desire for that union is in this chapter in this chapter it says specifically as we suffer the anxiety the self-doubt the conflict the lack of peace that is our cue then we have to see that there's some imperfection and that desire is coming from self-love not completely from God's will when it's coming from God's will 
I am going to tell you, you will have peace. Doesn't matter if you don't have the money, the hours in the day, the strength, your heart, your body, your mind will completely be at rest, peaceful. Because God had the will to desire this for you before you stepped into it and put your desires on it. So when you step into God's will, it's a totally different game. Completely different game. We need to watch those struggles and those insecurities and look for our own bit of self-love that we put on something that we want so very bad. So level one. And this week, I'd like you to look at one or two big decisions that you have upcoming that something that you've desired maybe you want a new boat maybe you'd like to have another child maybe you these are big decisions these are very big decisions and the desire in your heart maybe you want to go back to school maybe you'd like to finish your four-year degree what is that desire what is the root of this desire are you calm about it? Are you at peace about it? If not, this is not the decision in, that we're trying to write down in your little journal. We want something that is causing you some stress, some anxiety. It's causing you a cross to bear that is going to expose some bit of self-love that must be mortified in order for God to step in and help you. Because as this book says, this struggle with our own self-love the more we attempt to mortify it, the more we attempt to give it up, this brings his will, his will for our peace, our happiness, and our joy. He can step in and come to our aid. So level one, look at these one or two decisions. And I'd like you to look at how that decision serves your own sense of self-love. I'd like you to journal this. And I'd like you to point out where you're experiencing the anxiety, where you are experiencing any level of self-doubt, uh, uh, like they were talking about, some kind of recrimination or anxiety. I want you to journal that and see if you can pinpoint it and offer it up to God and say, I don't want this if this is not your will, God. I do not want this. And I'd like you to mean it. I'd like you to pray for that desire to be his level two let's take this a step further with your one or two things because as they say we will experience crosses we will experience sufferings is the suffering that you're willing to go through to get to the end of your desire worth the mortification that you need to step into is it worth the weight is it worth the investment? Is it worth taking years to, to save and to produce something that will be part of God's will for your life instead of just yours? And that's the important point. So as you look to these two, level two, I want you to look at waiting to fulfill this desire or dream until you're no longer attached to that desire and what do I mean by attached because it's really difficult to not be attached to those things we want and we love and we desire with all our heart and God wants us to have those things that we desire however we must look for the errors of self-love so I level two I really want you to take a look at this one or two desire that you have for change big change and I'd like you to ask God to show you. The Holy Spirit, please come into my prayer and show me how this desire and obtaining this desire serves my own self-love and not God's. That's the key here. That is the big key. And with that, like and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in to Swords of St. Michael. Sister Frere signing out. Don't forget. The battle's already been won. It's ongoing. And hopefully I'm here to help you fight it better. God bless. Take care. Until next week.